Hello and welcome to a new English episode of Logistics People Talk, the official Renus podcast for everyone who wants to stay up to date on logistics. We are your hosts, Gwen Dünner and Andrea Goretzky. Our topic today is the boom in e-commerce business and shipments, which dominated the industry during the past couple of years. With us today, in digital form, are two e-commerce specialists, Carrie Delaney, Managing Director of Renus Warehousing Solutions in Lutterworth, UK. Hi, everyone. Hi, Carrie. And Stepan Govin, International Sector Leader for e-commerce within Renus Warehousing Solutions. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, Stepan. It's a great pleasure for me to be with you today here. For us as well. <laughs> so uh, the e-commerce business, the business of buying consumer items online and having them delivered to your door has been on the rise for years. Online marketplaces have sprouted everywhere. They even have, as with Amazon, become not just market leaders, but business behemoths in a global sense. But first, let's look at some figures. Around 90% of EU citizens have an internet connection. In 2019, 67% of these ordered something online. Most online shoppers are from the UK. Therefore, if you consider all of Europe, 85% of internet users shopped online in 2019. This is what we generally refer to as the e-commerce boom, since only a mere 10 or 5 years before, the percentage was significantly lower. In Germany, the volume for e-commerce shipments rose by 60% between 2008 and 2018. So, Stepan. You are the international sector leader for e-commerce within Renus Warehousing Solutions. At the same time, you are located in Poland, where Renus operates some of its largest warehouses. First of all, what exactly does this e-commerce boom signify and why is it booming as an industry? It's all about convenience. And in my opinion, the convenience is the biggest driver of the e-com growth. The global e-commerce market is expected to total $5.5 trillion dollars in 2022. That figure is estimated to grow over the next few years, showing that uh, borderless e-commerce is becoming a growing path for uh, online retailers. Why is e-commerce growing from strength to strength? Uh, I believe it's about lifestyle. Uh, our lifestyle becomes busier and technology changes and improves. We as a consumer are looking for a new, more convenient methods to fulfill our sales need. E-commerce is to be simple, easy, have too many products in one place and being available 24 hours, seven days a week with detailed description of the products, photos with different delivery and payment options. So in Poland, we are at Rina's running largest e-com operation for online retailers, brand and, and marketplaces. Uh, just a few numbers from the last year, I was really surprised when I noticed that we shipped out over 120 million items to the European consumers uh, across several uh, European countries uh, from Poland. Yeah, that's uh, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, so why is e-commerce so important for Renus today in today's market? So I believe that there's many advantages of e-commerce. Uh, from the perspective of the brands or, or, or market players, uh, companies can reach a wider audience internationally. On the other hand, companies have a lower operational cost in comparison to the brick and mortar model that we know from the past. Additionally, the shopping from home is more convenient for us as a consumers, and also we can easily comprise the shop across different brands. Also, the better selection of the goods is available. So this is the perspective of the of the players. But I think that the logistics uh, play a very important role in this e-commerce and environment and we as a logisticians are let's say silent observer of the change of the changing uh, customer behaviors at Renus, we are partnership with the brands and retailers for many many years and we even know the sector from the previous let's say may order business this is how it starts at Renus, uh, the sector approach was uh, initiated uh, several months ago as a program to unlock our market and country's expertise in the e-com sector uh, to support our customers in creating uh, winning warehousing concepts uh, internationally. If we consider that uh, our footprint consists 21 countries with nearly three and a half million square meters with 155 locations worldwide, 
it's a solid base for us to initiate dialogue with our potential and existing customers about the warehousing strategies, including very sophisticated and tested solutions in terms of the peak management, HR concept, technology in terms of infra logistics, sustainability solution or specific warehousing network. Kerry, you are the managing director of Rena's Warehousing Solutions in the UK. What are your experiences in e-commerce and is e-commerce of similar importance in the UK and for Rena specifically? Yes, absolutely is the is the answer to that question. E-commerce is really important for us uh, the same way that it is for uh, Stefan in in Poland and it's really the main focus of our next five-year strategy. Certainly over the last five years at Renus in the UK, we've seen a significant increase in demand for our e-commerce logistics services, whilst at the same time, the demand for more traditional B2B services has really remained flat. And, and to refer to Stefan's point earlier, this reflects the global shift in consumer demand, uh, whereby people are now purchasing goods in a more convenient way online and moving away from the traditional shops and bricks and mortar way of, of purchasing goods. As you mentioned earlier, the UK is one of the top five e-commerce markets in the world, alongside China, the USA and Japan. Almost 30% of all UK retail sales uh, are now online. And actually, importantly for us, this is set to grow by a further 5% year on year. So in the next five years, we can expect in excess of 25% growth in e-commerce. And I think we can all agree that is most definitely what we would call an e-commerce boom, for, for sure. <laughs> so, so, of course, that makes this a very attractive industry for us to be in, uh, particularly for Renus. Uh, we are a provider of e-commerce services. Uh, in logistics, and we are perfectly positioned to scale and grow our footprint, our global uh, capacity uh, in line with this booming demand uh, for those services. You already mentioned some uh, challenges uh, of e-commerce. What is Renus doing to address these challenges? The biggest challenge for Renus is really to keep up with the increasing demands of the customer. They increase year on year, the expectation of, of the customer. And as a, as a personal consumer, and I'm sure we can all remember, only a few years ago, as, a, as an online customer, if you placed your order today, you were happy to receive your order maybe within two to three days. Now, that is not really acceptable <laughs> as, a, as an e-commerce customer. Our expectation is much higher. So we expect the same day or next day at, at the worst. And we expect that now really as a standard. And um, the other challenge is uh, we all have our, our own personal experience. So when we shop online, we've got lots of different sellers offering the same product to us. However, in the end, Our decision to purchase a good and services is whether we can get it at the lowest cost and the quickest, most convenient speed of delivery. So therefore, as a logistics provider, uh, our biggest challenge is to make sure we can meet the speed of delivery at the lowest possible cost. And uh, Renus are always looking for ways to, to meet that challenge. Absolutely. And of course, when we are talking about e-commerce, we also have to talk about what happened during the last couple of years. As we have established, online retail has been growing consistently. But as we all know from experience, in 2020, consumers went all in. In the United Kingdom, for example, e-commerce growth leaped nearly fivefold. Other countries also saw huge gains. And to a large amount, this sudden spike can be attributed to the COVID-19 pandemic, seeing as we were all suddenly stuck at home you know, couldn't go shopping, couldn't leave the apartment or houses to some extent. Ordering online was already an easy choice, but now it became the only one. Kerry, how did you personally experience this period and how did it affect Renus and Lutterworth? Very similar to, to, to what you said there. So on a personal level, like everybody else, all of our shopping was online, from groceries to clothing, often buying uh, things that I didn't need most of the time, um, as, as I'm sure all of us uh, yep. Yep. did. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, um, however, fr from a business point of view, those two years were were very difficult uh, with a lot of challenges, uh, but also very successful for, for Renus in Lutterworth. If I talk about some of the, the difficulties, the main one was to keep our people safe. That was the, the, the absolute main concern, because at the end of the day, our people are absolutely our main priority. So we can't run our business without people. And so we had to put in a lot of extra measures uh, to keep people safe. And we followed the uh, COVID guidelines very strictly. Our customers were very supportive throughout the period as well. We worked together in partnership and we tried to ensure minimum business disruption whilst maintaining the health and, and safety of our, of our people. So those were some of the challenges. However, despite those uh, difficulties, we had our most two successful years at Renus in Lutterworth. In 2020, uh, we signed two new e-commerce customers. One is a luxury ski wear customer and the other is a lifestyle fashion customer. And then the next year, so in 2021, we won two more e-commerce customers, one selling guards and accessories and the other selling luxury kitchen items. So a wide range of different customers, which goes to show that during those two years, people were buying everything uh, online. Uh, so the e-commerce boom really did provide our team at Renus Lutterworth with some fantastic opportunities from a personal and business growth point of view. And this is really down to our experience and success in delivering excellent service levels. Um, now we have some really strong brands in our portfolio and we're in a very strong strategic position to win new, more new business uh, as the e-commerce market continues to grow at such a fast pace in the UK. Stepan, in Poland, where Renus operates warehouses for some of the biggest e-commerce companies inside Europe, how did you tackle the situation of this new virus, the security aspects for both the staff and the customers? Uh, yeah, so as Kari already mentioned, the repercussion from the COVID-19 pandemic have uh, drastically impacted warehouse logistics for both B2C and B2B operation. Uh, and besides global product supply chain constraints, we have seen a dramatic increase in uh, B2C e-commerce sales and decrease in the B2B size through closing uh, of brick and mortar stores. This leads to logistic volume uncertainty as countries and their brands continue to adapt the repercussion from the um, pandemic. In that days, we quickly adjust our warehousing operations and procedures to ensure the safety of uh, our team and continue to meet dynamic nature of our customer expectation as they adjust product mix demand. I think that it was really challenging period for both for our customers and for ourselves. But at the end, I believe that even we improved during that time our partnership as we sit together as a one team and try to work out what would be the most uh, uh, the best the best solution for our customers to ensure the continuity of the um, of the business. When it comes to the team, was it difficult to find new employees during the pandemic? It was, and it still is, I would say. I think that currently uh, the labor management aspect is one of the biggest challenge in terms of the running warehousing uh, operation. However, I believe that the concept and the proven methods that we implemented even before the pandemic, including attractive the universities, uh, the very friendly environment at our warehouses, you know, friendly canteens, uh, huge locker rooms, Uh, benefits program for our employees. We only benefit during the pandemic from that uh, from that concept. So uh, it was really difficult. However, we we manage it quite smoothly. Also, having in mind how what is our approach to the warehousing operation, I believe that finding the right balance between number of work workforce in the warehousing operation and automatization is a, is a crucial here. So definitely, uh, the balance is really important to move some uh, impact on the on the technology in that sense. Absolutely. Um, and Carrie, how did the pandemic and the renewed spike affect your strategy for Renus Warehousing Solutions in the UK? So um, as I mentioned previously, uh, Renus uh, in the UK had two very successful years uh, with the, the four new customers who came on board. 
Um, however, the challenge we now face is that all of our warehouses are completely full. It's a great problem to have. <laughs> Nobody's complaining, but there is um, a, 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 a a significant lack of warehouse capacity now in the UK. Also, with the UK e-commerce market set to grow uh, a further 25% in the next five years, we really needed to rethink our strategy. And as we said, in the UK, we needed to think bigger. So we were already thinking big, but now we can think even bigger uh, and take advantage, really, of this amazing opportunity, which is the uh, the e-commerce boom. So our original strategy was to double the size of the company uh, by 2025. And now with our bigger strategy, we see this growing four times in, in, in the next five years. And this is with the help, of course, and the investment from the Renus Group, um, who absolutely support us uh, with our big strategy. This investment uh, will allow us to increase our warehouse footprint uh, some really exciting news for us in the UK is that we will be constructing two new warehouses in the next two years. The first one comes in October this year and the next one is in 2023. This sees us add one million square foot additional capacity to our, to our warehouse footprint. And our focus for that strategy will be to fill those warehouses with retailers who provide e-commerce services. So it's really uh, exciting for the next two years. And Stepan, are there any plans on the Polish side for further expansion and beyond for arenas? Uh, definitely, yes. I believe that our role as a logistic service provider is to secure and boost our customer growth. So definitely, if our customers are willing to grow, definitely we need we need to follow uh, follow on them. So speaking about Poland, currently we have a secured plots for new investment, and in total we can deliver around 140,000 square meters. Uh, in the next years, which means that definitely there is a room for expansion for our existing uh, and potential uh, customers. But not only in Poland, we have a strong development plan. In France, we are going to open new warehouses, 80,000 square meters each near Paris and Lyon. And also, Carrie already mentioned about the development in the UK. So I believe that uh, e-commerce is a strong driver currently in uh, Adrenus. But I believe that it's not only about, you know, square meters itself, but also in the investment in the technology and innovations. Because, of course, on the one hand, it's about if you have a space to run the operations. But on the other hand, uh, it's about how efficient uh, our operation will be and how flexible we could be with our with, with our projects. Absolutely, yeah. And before we dive deeper into those new exciting developments, um, I just wanted to ask two more questions about e-commerce. As you just said, e-commerce has grown two to five times faster than before the pandemic, but what goes up must come down, right? Can we expect some of these categories or segments of the market to slow down? Uh, so from the global perspective, uh, retail uh, and retail e-commerce spending is ex expected to stabilize in 2022. Uh, after two years of unpredictable circumstances and unusual growth patterns, even in a slower growth environment, uh, total new spending will be enormous and total spending will surge past $7 trillion uh, by 2025. So I believe that the dynamic of the growth could be a bit slower, nonetheless, it still will be significant. As you mentioned, the e-commerce market is very volatile, with changes like dif disruption, trends or other situations sometimes developing very quickly. How do you react to these challenges in general? Kerry, how about you? Yes, um, as, as Stefan said, we are, we are in a, a very volatile uh, environment at the moment. However, um, I think there will still be strong uh, demand for e-commerce services going forward. But Renus as a company, you know, since the COVID pandemic, it, it realised very quickly that if we are to be successful as a global business, uh, not, not just European, but as a global business, then each country must have a very flexible and agile, what we call VUCA business strategy in place to cope with business threatening situations. This VUCA word 
was quite uh, new to us uh, two years ago. So this means our strategy prepares us for volatile, uncertain, complex and ambiguous uh, situations affecting us as, as a global company. The pandemic, of course, uh, would be classed as a VUCA situation. And it really, it made us all realise that global situations can change very quickly and uh, most of the time without warning. So therefore, we need to be ready to change our plans and strategies rapidly if we are to remain successful. And again, uh, RENAS are very well positioned to adapt to these VUCA changes, mainly because we are a very decentralised organisation. And one of our key values is entrepreneurship. And personally, as a managing director and the country manager for the UK, I, I am fully responsible uh, for the actions of our country strategy. And because we don't have a centralised function telling us what to do, which can be very slow and takes time to, for the message to, to get to each country, here in Renus, we can act very, very quickly, make decisions quick. And this ability to react quickly means that we protect our customers' business. That's very important. We look after our customers. We react to VUCA changes quickly, but we can also then protect the long term future of Renus as a global business. And Stepan, from your side? I have to say that I really like the carry, uh, that carry reference to the VUCA definition because uh, definitely it reflects perfectly to the, to the, to the situation from the, from the pandemic. However, my uh, thoughts is that uh, even before the global pandemic, we, we as a logisticians lived in the VUCA, VUCA world because, you know, our, it's our daily business to struggle with uh, unexpected changes. And the last one and a half year have made this even clearer given the ongoing uh, pandemic. The, the constant change, uncertainty and increase in complexity and the fact that no one way is the right way anymore make it more difficult for, for us, but also for, for companies. But I believe that uh, the set values of the of the Renus perfectly match with this current situation, and uh, we really are, are ready to to answer for for those challenges. A side effect of the pandemic, since this was already a topic on everyone's agenda, was sustainability. Of course, in general, but also when it comes to transports, packaging, and the industry in general. Today, e-commerce retailers are increasingly looking to reduce the environmental impact of trading online. Stepan, how do logistics service providers help transform the online business into a more sustainable industry? Uh, I would like to refer to the meeting with our one of our customers uh, we had a couple of months ago when we discussed uh, approach to the further development. It's a really huge marketplace, uh, uh, which they are playing a very important role in several European countries. And at that meeting, one of the top decision makers at, at the customer side said that uh, logistics is a lifestyle, but especially green one is our future. So I think it's showing what is the approach of our customer and at the same time, our approach to the sustainability. Uh, the growing awareness of environmental impact on the e-com industry and encouraging uh, consumers to choose sustainable focus retailers and also younger consumers are demanding increased sustainability and they are willing to pay for it. By providing industry uh, leading fulfillment services in terms of sustainability, example, BREAM outstanding facilities, we can support our retailers to reduce uh, the environmental uh, impact of uh, trading online. Of course, there's a couple of examples like, you know, a sustainable solar energy, uh, use of renewable energy from um, solar systems, energy savings uh, or, or green infrastructure. Definitely, it's a part of our activities when only together with our customer, we can uh, we can move forward. And thanks to the really open partnership, we can work on some solutions that will reduce the uh, environmental impact on the on the planet. Of course, we know that uh, Renus already has a couple of warehouses that are sustainable. But Kerry, you already mentioned uh, that your, your plans of expansion will sustainability factor into these. And can you tell us more about the new building? Yes, uh, absolutely. So sustainability is at the top of our list when it comes to the construction of uh, the two new warehouses. 
Uh, we saw the fantastic results that our colleagues in Tilburg achieved uh, in the Netherlands, where they built the most sustainable warehouse in Europe a couple of years ago, uh, which is called the Tube. We we all saw that and uh, we were so impressed with that sustainable building. So in the UK, we saw this and we thought when we build our new uh, warehouses, we want to do something similar in line with our own sustainability and uh, carbon zero targets. So we took the decision to build our two new warehouses to Briam Outstanding Specification. This is the highest possible specification uh, you can uh, have. And it's it's higher than uh, the specification of the tube as well. So uh, we will also be the most uh, sustainable warehouse. Uh, certainly in the UK, it is the first one of its kind. But for us, the green sustainability aspect is one thing. But our sustainability policy is not just about buildings and, and carbon emissions. Uh, it's also about the well-being of our people and sustaining a happy and healthy workforce. This is also very important. So with this in mind, our buildings will provide world class welfare facilities for our people to enjoy and make the working environment somewhere they want to be. We'll install things like an on site gym, sports pitches, outdoor green garden areas and places for people to sit in the fresh air. The most exciting part is the roof garden. So we will have a roof garden uh, where our customers and employees can sit and uh, enjoy the sunshine during uh, during their break times. So the whole sustainability piece for us is absolutely top of our agenda. Kerry, besides uh, sustainability, another driver of uh, e-commerce development is the customer experience, which already begins in the warehouse. How do you align your warehousing logistics strategy to today's e-commerce trends? In addition to installing the latest innovation and process automation, which is very important to make the speed of delivery quicker, we need to make our picking faster and, and more accurate. We also focus a lot of our effort on the packing of e-commerce orders. This is also very important for us. And we see our employees as an extension of our customer's brand. So we ask our employees to act and think like they actually work for the customer. And therefore, they pack the products with high levels of, of care and attention. That That's also very important um, in terms of our e-commerce orders. To help us with that, when we bring a new customer on board, we ask them to help us with the training of our people. So, so train our people, show them the concept of your brand and show us how to pack the products correctly and how you would like to receive them as a customer yourself so that the parcel gets the best possible experience and the end customer is delighted when they get their, their order. And in turn, if we continue to do that well, People will buy over and over again from that same seller. And Stefan will, will agree with me that brand loyalty and repeat purchase from, from a customer is so important. So, so for us, um, yes, we align our warehouse strategy perfectly with the customer and we work in partnership together to ensure that whole delivery experience uh, is the best it can possibly be. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stefan, how do you react to the current trends? Uh, yeah, I think that Kerry mentioned almost the, all the all the possible strategies that that could be applied. However, I think that we talk about before we talk about how customers would like to receive the, the packages and how how timing is important here. And I think that uh, thanks to our quite strong warehousing footprint, currently we could propose to our customer different strategies in terms of the several location across the Europe to be closer to the final uh, customers. So it means that thanks to the Renus network, we could cover several markets from few, few locations in, in order to improve the lead times, which is really crucial from customer uh, experience uh, perspective. This is one, one of the examples, how can we follow on the, on the customer strategies in terms of warehousing solutions. So regarding the last mile deliveries directly to the customer, according to recent research, the cost of the last mile deliveries in the entire e-commerce supply chain may reach almost 30%. Pick up and drop off parcel lockers, courier deliveries or drones. There are so many different forms of final mile delivery that are being developed and tested. 
In your opinion, how do today's customers want to receive the products they order? Uh, the pandemic world strengthened our perception of time and made it an even more valuable asset than before. Uh, the services that save us time and effort are treated with preference. In this context, it is essential to have more options for delivery, the goods we have ordered via courier, physical shop, collection point on lockers. The businesses can do this by integrating different options in their checkout. And I believe that the role of 3PL is to support the businesses through connection with uh, several partners in order to offer as many options of delivery the goods as, as possible. Uh, we at Renews also could offer the very specific uh, solutions related to the last mile deliveries when two months handling could be applied and we can offer the very so sophisticated uh, solutions in terms of the delivery of furniture, white goods or electronic uh, electronic devices. And it's a really sensitive aspect of the of the logistics because it's really uh, sensitive for, for, for the customer behaviors. And Carrie, from your side, is it similar or are there differences in the UK? Yeah, the uh, the last mile delivery is really an important part of the, the whole supply chain with, with e-commerce orders. And uh, it's so important to the customer when they're ordering online to to get their parcel exactly how they, they expect to get it. Obviously, with the rise in fuel prices, uh, which in the UK have risen by almost 50 percent since the start of the year, we are seeing the cost of that final mile delivery increasing uh, uh, on, on a regular basis. So with this in mind and, and also thinking about increased cost, but also sustainability, we've started to partner with uh, green uh, last mile delivery uh, carriers and uh, our recent partnership um, is with a, a last mile delivery company who offer 100% fully electric last mile delivery services. So this means there are zero carbon em emissions uh, within all the U major UK cities. But also because there's no fuel involved, uh, we actually find that the green parcel delivery is cheaper for our customers. So not only is it green and sustainable, it's actually a cheaper solution. So overall, uh, it's it's really a win-win uh, for, for everybody. So um, that that's what our latest initiative is for the last mile. Wow. Thank you. That's a perfect conclusion because this already brings us to the end of today's episode. But first and foremost, um, I really would like to thank you both, Kerry and Stepan, for these in-depth insights, but also all these new developments that we have now learned about, um, about the e-commerce world. So thank you, both of you. Yes, thank you. Thank, thank you for inviting me today. It's been an absolute pleasure. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. So I think I can speak for both Andrea and myself when I say that we've learned a lot today, uh, not least um, that there is so much to come, especially with this new warehouse that uh, will be built in the UK. I'm sure Kerry and Renus UK will keep us up to date on these developments via the Renus channels. Thank you also to our listeners. We hope you have enjoyed this episode. And if you have any questions or suggestions for us, leave us a comment on our LinkedIn posts or on our blog, the Logistics People Community. You can subscribe to Logistics People Talk on Spotify or wherever you listen to podcasts. Stay safe out there and tune in next time.